What is the time response of an underdamped second order control system to unit step input? Well, my name is Rishi Ranju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask ourselves an obvious question. What is actually the time response of an underdamped second order control system to unit step input? Well, let's find out. So, we know for a fact that every second order control system will have a transfer function given as T of S is equal to C of S divided by R of S which is equal to omega n squared divided by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. So now here we have an underdamped second order control system. So the speciality of an underdamped second order control system is that the value of this zeta lies in between 0 and 1. So here 0 is less than zeta is less than 1. So the value of zeta lies in between 0 and 1. So it might be 0 0.2 or 0 0.75 or 0 0.89 or even 0 0.99. So the value of zeta lies between 0 and 1. So here, for us to find the time response of such kind of an underdamped control system, what we do is that we give a step input to it. But before we give a step input, we have to rearrange this particular transfer function because the value of zeta is between 0 and 1. So for that, what we do is that we now write this as, this is equal to omega n squared divided by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s. Plus, here, if this, if we need to make this first term as s plus eta omega n, the whole square, then here we must have a zeta squared omega n squared term. So, now here, we're subtracting this zeta squared omega n squared term here as well. And finally, we have omega n squared. So, here, upon now, upon simplifying this, we would get this as omega n squared divided by s plus zeta omega n the whole squared plus omega n squared into 1 minus zeta squared. So here we do this because here in the case of a particular underdamped control system, the value of zeta is between 0 and 1. So here this value is always between 0 and 1. So therefore this term will never be a negative term. So therefore let us now take this term as omega d. So therefore, we would get omega d is equal to omega n into root of 1 minus zeta squared. So now, let us substitute this over here. Upon substituting that over there, we would get the transfer function as t of s is equal to c of s by r of s, which is equal to omega n squared divided by s plus zeta omega n the whole squared plus omega d squared, substituting this over here. But, 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 here we are giving a unit step signal as the input to this particular control system. So here in the case of a transfer function, we have a transfer function as the output divided by the input. So this R of S is the input. So here we are giving a unit step signal as the input. But we know for a fact that a step signal is denoted as U of T is equal to 1 for T is greater than or equal to 0. So here R of T is equal to 1 for T is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, R of S is equal to 1 upon S for all values of t greater than or equal to 0. Let us now substitute this R of S over here. So what happens is that when we take this R of S over here, we would now get C of S is equal to 1 upon S multiplied by omega n squared divided by S plus zeta omega n the whole squared plus omega d squared. So now in order to find the time response, we need to now convert this from the frequency domain to the time domain. So for that, we need to find the inverse Laplace transform of this particular expression. So for that, we now make use of the concept of partial fractions. So here, now this has got two terms over here. So therefore now we split this using partial fractions. So this would now become a upon s plus b s plus c divided by s plus zeta omega and the whole squared plus omega d squared. So now we have split these using partial fractions. So now upon taking the LCM and equating the numerator of both these terms, we would now get 
omega n squared is equal to a into s plus zeta omega n the whole squared plus a into omega d squared plus b into s squared plus c into s. So here we have this particular expression now. So now we would get three equations. First equation is by equating the coefficients of s squared term, then by equating the coefficients of s term, and finally equating the constants, that is here the constant is omega n squared. So therefore, upon equating these three things, we would now get three equations. So these are the three equations that we would get. a plus b is equal to zero, 2a zeta omega n plus c is equal to zero, and a into zeta squared omega n squared plus omega d squared is equal to omega n squared. So now, first when we take this, here we only have one constant a. So now, upon equating this over here and upon substituting the value of omega d over here, we would get the value of a is equal to 1. So if we have a is equal to 1, then b is equal to minus 1. So here, since a is equal to 1, the value of c would be equal to c is equal to minus 2 zeta omega n. So here now we have the value of b, we have the value of c, and we have the value of a. So now substituting these three values over here, we would now get the value of c of s as c of s is equal to 1 by s minus s plus 2 zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n the whole square plus omega d squared. So here, this is what we get upon substituting the value of a, b, and c in this particular equation. So here, a becomes 1, b is equal to minus 1, so this becomes minus s, and here c is minus 2 zeta omega n. So taking minus common here, we would get this as plus 2 zeta omega n. So this is the value of c of s we have. But, 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 here, we know for a fact that the Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t sin omega t is omega by s plus a the whole square plus omega squared. And the Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t cos omega t is s plus a divided by s plus a the whole square plus omega squared. So we need to use these two terms over here in order to find the inverse Laplace transform of this. But here, when we observe carefully, here we have s plus 2a. So if, if this term is a, because here we have zeta omega n and here we have zeta omega n, we have this as s plus 2a. So therefore, we need to split these into two terms. So therefore, c of s would become c of s is equal to 1 upon s minus s plus zeta omega n divided by this particular term. So here we have s plus a. And now here then we have minus the next zeta omega n term. So zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n plus omega d square. So here, the interesting fact is that when we observe carefully here, we have two terms, these two terms itself. That is, first we have s plus a divided by s plus a the whole square plus omega squared. This term is this. So but here we have zeta omega n. Here we are supposed to have omega d because here the omega value is omega d. So therefore what we do is that we now take here omega d over here and we divide it by omega d over here. So in numerator we have zeta omega n. So here the constant term becomes zeta omega n divided by omega d and here we have it in the form of omega divided by s plus a the whole square plus omega square. We have just simplified into a really simple concept. So now all we have to do is apply these concepts of inverse Laplace transform. Therefore, this thus would now become equal to C of t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s is 1 minus here this is s plus a divided by s plus a whole square plus omega square. That is this particular term. So therefore, this thus would become e raised to minus zeta omega n t multiplied by cos omega d t. And minus finally here we have here zeta omega n by omega d substituting the value of omega d over here. We would get this equal to zeta divided by root of 1 minus zeta square. And finally upon taking the inverse Laplace transform of this particular expression, we would get this as e raised to minus zeta omega n t into sine omega d t. And finally, upon further simplification, we would get c of t is equal to 1 minus 
e raised to minus zeta omega nt divided by 1 minus zeta squared into sin omega dt minus phi, where omega d is given as omega d is equal to omega n into root of 1 minus zeta squared. And this phi is given as phi is equal to tan inverse root of 1 minus zeta squared divided by zeta. So therefore, this thus is simply the time response of an underdamped second order control system to a unit step input. As simple as that guys. So this thus is simply how you derive the expression for the time response of an underdamped second order control system when we give a unit step signal as the input to it. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So, I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what is referred to as the time response of an underdamped second order control system to a unit step input. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.